Let's take a look at the new MobiLink TNC4. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So after probably a year, the MobiLink TNCs are finally back in stock. Well, sort of back in stock. They're available for pre-order until that pre-order is filled. Now, I was lucky enough to get in on the very first pre-order and already have the TNC4 here in hand. So I've had a little bit of time to play with it, a little bit of time to test a few things, and kind of see what's different from the TNC2 or the TNC3. Now, from a form factor standpoint, these guys are identical. You really cannot tell any difference between the TNC3 and the TNC4. That portion has not changed. However, they have made a couple of really nice upgrades to this thing. First of all, the TNC4 comes with a USB-C charging port instead of the older style micro uh, USB connectors. Now, one of the biggest pain points, at least from my perspective and pretty much every other MobiLink owner I've ever talked to, has been resolved. They have finally fixed the power button. Before, it simply uh, needed to be bumped to be able to turn on or turn off. And that was a problem because I have dropped this thing down into a bag before and that button just get pressed momentarily, end up turning this device on and running the battery completely dead. Now you need to do a long button press to turn it on and turn it off. So to turn it on, you simply press and hold the power button and you will get a green light followed by a blue light. And that's the way you know that the device is on. To turn it off, it's the same procedure. You press and hold the button. You will get a green light that will slowly fade out until it's extinguished completely and you know that the device is off. I have verified that this works with Radio Mail and it works brilliantly. Uh, Radio Mail was able to auto detect the TNC4 and I made a connection the first time I attempted one using the Radio Mail app. Now, Pat Menu will be supporting the TNC4. However, if you're on Linux, uh, just know if you try to do a manual connection to the TNC4, it uses the default channel of one. That's a little bit different from the TNC3. Uh, that used a channel 6 uh, when you wanted to connect to it over Bluetooth. So that's one little difference between the 3 and the 4 that you do need to be aware of uh, if you're trying to connect, the, connect this up to a Linux device. Uh, so the TNC4 shares that default channel number with the TNC2, which also used channel 1. Something else that I haven't confirmed, I haven't had a chance to play with, but I was talking to the M17 guys at Hamcation in Orlando, and they're telling me that everything you need for M17 is baked right into the firmware on the TNC4, so that is another upgrade. Now, there have been a couple of drawbacks, and probably because I'm an early adopter on this. The very first batch that has shipped out there has been some problems charging these devices, and it kind of depended on what cable you were using and what type of charger you are using. That has been fixed in a firmware update, and as soon as I get a chance, I am going to update the firmware on this device. Uh, something else that has occurred, it hasn't happened to me, but I have read about it on the MobiLink forums, is you can sometimes get a fast flashing red uh, light on this and that indicates some sort of fault and apparently Rob is working on a fix for that uh, in the next firmware. So hopefully we've got that in the next day or two. Rob, uh, the developer and creator of the MobiLink TNC, has been very responsive in the forums to help guys get these minor little quirks worked out. And anytime you're coming out with a new product, you can expect some sort of little bugs to possibly creep up. But again, he has been very responsive to help get uh, all of these little minor issues worked out. One thing about upgrading 
the firmware on this device, I originally thought that this was, uh, re was going to require Windows in order to update the firmware. I have since figured out that I could install the application that's needed to update the firmware onto a Linux Mint device. So that's great news. I will leave links to the software down in the description below. I'll also leave links to one of the forum posts where uh, Rob is working on getting uh, the latest version of the firmware uh, for this uh, released so that maybe you can find that a little bit easier. Definitely check the forums though. Uh, that's where I find out about all of the latest firmware releases for each of these devices. And that goes all the way back to the TNC2, which was the first one that I acquired. One last thing to note here, as of the time I am filming this video, the website is accepting pre-orders again. I pre-ordered mine, uh, I believe it was sometime in February and got mine, I believe that was early February when I pre-ordered mine and I had it in my hands right around the end of February or the 1st of March. So expect probably three to four weeks before you get yours in your hands but I am glad to see that they are available for sale once again. If you found this information helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.